I give you Farhan Zaidi. Oh, God. When he came on this show, Willard and Dibbs, on 95-7 the game, and was asked about this cockamamie sell in July idea. Now, this was two weeks ago. <laughs> Maybe even more. Yeah, June 16th. Okay? I want everyone to hear exactly what the man said. I hear some of the, you know, <laughs> rumblings about selling and, you know, both as an executive and as a fan of sports, I don't understand that at all. I mean, when your team has a chance to get in the playoffs and we know anything can happen in the playoffs, um, you know, you, you, you'd like your team to, to fight for that. And, and, and that's sort of my mindset. That's our collective mindset. You know, we think we have a good team to play with. Anybody, this is going to be a big test for us, not just this weekend, but next week when we're back at home playing the Padres and the Diamondbacks. Got a lot of competition in our division. And, um, you know, this time of year, you're, the, the trade deadline is a month, month and a half away. And a lot of times the, the team and the team's performance dictates your strategy. But uh, I, I hope we're in it, and I hope we're in a position where, I mean, look, the, the perfect scenario is, uh, you've got a really well balanced team. You don't have any weaknesses. You don't have to go out there and plug holes and, you know, compromise the the great farm system development that we've had. But if we're in a position where there are pieces we need to fill or guys we think can help us, we want to be in a position where uh, we're pursuing those guys. Okay, so that happened literally as they were about to start a three game series against the Dodgers. He mentions the Padres and D backs as well. If anybody needs a helpful reminder, the Giants went eight and two. Or in that ten game stretch, feels and also like a long time ago. Swept the Dodgers yeah, in L.A. Boy. Yeah, the funny thing is, is it wasn't that long ago, and everybody was partying in the streets about this team. But yeah, what he said right off the top, this isn't one of those that you're like. I, I, I mean, this is not a, a a debate. This is not even sort of like right. You've someone's got an opinion. You've got another opinion. Okay, let's have a discussion. I don't even. I don't understand. I, I, I don't even understand, especially from fans who are usually in the win now sort of a mindset. Right. A fan usually doesn't want to hear, let's wait for later. Fans don't like that. Okay. The 49ers gave up a massive haul for Christian McCaffrey. And the discussion for a short period of time was wow, they gave up a lot for a guy who was hurt all the time. Then he showed up. And when he started to start games, the 49ers never lost again until they arrived in Philadelphia. Yeah. Their quarterback's arms all fell off. So then suddenly no one was thinking anymore about, oh, gosh, you gave up the future. We love the now to the point where some people, if Shohei Otani was available in two weeks, would love you to give up the farm for a guy that you may lose three months later. That's how into the now we are. Now, The now also includes the Giants with a winning record and in a playoff spot, yet some of those same fans are like, "Ah, they just don't have it, and so let's make a move that will solidify 2026. I'm just having a real hard time understanding. Well, it makes almost no sense based on what you have right now on this team. And you go back to that day that you guys had Farhan on. I was off. It was you and Larry. And it was Friday, July 16th. I'll take your word for it. They would beat the Dodgers that night. They would sweep the Dodgers. Since that day, and Farhan came on before that game that night, they've gone 10 and 8. So they basically have been the exact same team since then that they were before then. Before that game, they were 36 and 32, and now they're 46 and 40. So you're basically the exact same team now as you were then. And he told you then that you're not going to be sellers because you're very much in the mix. And right now, two and a half weeks later, you're still in the same spot. You're now a couple games more above 500. You're coming off a four-game losing streak, and things look bad right now. But as good as things looked then, and you had swept St. Louis before that Dodger series, and you ended up winning 10 in a row, were you that good to win 10 in a row? Or are you this bad to lose 8 of 10? Or are you really both of those teams at once? Well, I, I mean, the, the, the normal answer to your question is somewhere in the middle. Or you're both. Which I think is actually kind of obvious. Nobody's 10 in a row good. You don't just go do that. Maybe right. the Braves. I think they've won 24 or 27 or something like that. I mean, they're fantastic, obviously. But, like, no, nobody is just snap your fingers, win 9 or 10 out of every 10 games. 
And then this losing streak is partially, I think, explainable. Yeah, they're, they, they've had, like many teams do, they've had some serious injury issues. Um, and then there are also flaws in the team that I think we saw even when they were winning 10 in a row. They do not have a starting rotation. <laughs> they're going to need one at some point if they'd like to do something that matters toward, toward the end of the year. So I agree with you. Everything that was true then is true now, but I actually think it's furthered a little bit for two reasons. One, just a matter of time. Those 18 games you mentioned are another three weeks of life where the Giants have stayed right in it. Yep. And because they played the three supposed other good teams in the division, went head-to-head, took on all comers, ripped through them, went eight and two, I think that gives you a little bit of confidence that maybe you didn't have prior to that winning streak. No? It should, yeah, in no. terms of the head-to-head and the teams in your division. But then you look at it, and you're still now third in the division, and you're kind of the team that everyone expected that you might be, which is, you're right about 500. So you won 10 in a row, which was obviously amazing. Now you've lost 8 of 10, which is dreadful. Are you either amazing or dreadful? No, you're probably the team that lies in between. And you could look at what they've gone through since they went to Toronto. You played three games in Toronto. You had to travel across the border, which is not easy, post-COVID, post-9-11. Then you go to New York and you have a Sunday night game, and you got to fly all the way back home, and you play that very day that you land. And so you're, you're kind of leaking oil heading to the All-Star break. But I think about the notion of buy or sell, and I think about it in terms of the sell part, and you really don't have much that you want to sell in terms of Major League assets. And if you are going to sell anything, it's an asset that you already need, and it's an asset that you're already using. You know, It's not like you're going to sell Brandon Crawford because you've got no, Casey oh Schmidt gosh. tearing it up. <laughs> you know, Crawford's been amazing, yeah. and Schmidt also has been great, and you just don't have room for, for both of them. So you're going to sell the veteran guy knowing that the, that the rookie is ready to take his place. Or, to your point about Cobb, you're going to sell Cobb because Manaya really worked out and Wood's been amazing and Stripling has been great. And darn it, we have too many starters and not enough spots. we got to sell one of them. Whatever I mean, you have to sell, you don't have extra of. I, I would get it if this was the scenario. Let's say the Giants are exactly who they are. They're 46 and 40. But they had a star player who was in the final year of his deal and had indicated that it's going to be pretty hard to re-sign me. That's who you sell. Right. That's who you sell because you could get somebody else's high-level prospect. I think the, the other part of your point, which is an accurate one, is the fact that, that, like, who are you dreaming that the Giants would go get with anybody who they would give up? You mentioned Jock or Wilmer Flores. Yeah. What are you going to go get? Somebody's 18th prospect? And that's what you think? That, why? Why? <laughs> like, that's just, it's just a terrible, terrible bet. It's a terrible bet. The development that you want is already happening. By the way, if you're a fan of development, then you're a fan of the fact that, unfortunately, Tyro Estrada got hurt. Because Casey Schmidt right now, there would be a debate. This is where I could actually see a debate. Should the Giants really put every all of their current resources into winning this year, or do you ride with the bumps and bruises of a young player in the name of development. If Tyro Estrada were hurt, I could see us being two weeks away from going, should they send Casey Schmidt back down? Because he's really struggling. Really struggling. Should they send him back down, or do you want to keep developing him? Well, the beautiful thing is, Tyro got hurt, and you really don't have a choice. You really don't have a choice. Casey's going to stay up. Casey, please, go pick up all the ground balls over at second base. Keep working on your uh, on, on, on your, your your managing of the zone. You'd love this. We're driving uh, we're driving back yesterday, and because uh, I had to go down and get the kids, they were hanging out in Southern California yeah, with yeah. the family. Yeah, we're driving back. So you flew back from Hawaii and then flew to L.A. And then flew to Did LA. you immediately fly to L.A. or was there? Got back at ten o'clock from Hawaii on Monday night and flew out to L.A. Tuesday morning at at eight. So you drove back and up then, home and, and then, then back got in the to the car airport. and then drove yeah, 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 yeah and yeah. then drove back here. Okay. Yeah, and then went and saw fireworks in San Rafael last night. It was awesome. Got to you made it. It was fantastic. Big. Great show. Twelve minutes. Best twelve minutes of the night. Twelve minutes? Twelve minutes. 
Yeah, Christy said that. Mailing it in up there. I mean, Christy said that like about nine minutes in. She goes, yeah, like we're getting there. Because you know how sometimes they do the fake like this is the, the finale. This yeah, is yeah. the finale. <laughs> and, and and one of the kids goes, "Was that the finale?" And Christy goes, "No, they're twelve minutes." I go, "Only twelve? I know they got to be fifteen or twenty minutes." And then boom, finale. And I looked at the watch. There it is. Twelve nine forty two. It went twelve minutes. Gone. She's like, "I've been here a minute." Ah, I've nice. Lived, I've lived here for a second. <laughs> Stand down. Go get in the car. I'm like, oh, okay. Go get in the car. <laughs> It's perfect. <laughs> anyway, it's fantastic. So but, you're driving back. So we're driving back, okay. and we got the phone up on the little thing on the dashboard with the with the Giants game on. And Casey goes, strike one, strike two, strike three on a ball that was way low and outside. Jude, nine years old, goes, you know what they ought to call him? They ought to call him Chasey Schmidt. That's a five. I was like, dibs would have liked that <laughs> one. Dibs. It's a damn go, fine hurt me a little man. bit. I go, I like Casey. I don't want to start making fun of the guy already, but that's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. But yeah, like he's, he's a chip off the old block. He's gonna hey, be kid. he's gonna be up developing because the Giants don't have any other choice right now. So, best of both worlds. You want development? Great. Casey's staying. You want to win? Okay. You keep rooting for that too. So it's gonna be like that's what they're going to do. And you've got time with Casey Schmidt, and when Tyro comes back, and you're able to, you know, then make a determination on Casey Schmidt if he can go back down and you know come back up in September or whatever, whatever the standings will call for. But I don't think about like should you develop this team or should you try to win. Well, you've done both, and you're doing both. You are winning with young players. It doesn't mean you have to do one or the other.